dear students, welcome to our lesson. Hope you are okay and ready to study. Let's start. Don't forget to take your notebooks and a pen or a pencil to make notes. In today's lesson, we are going to read a text, learn some new vocabulary, look at some lexis and do a listening task. Today, we will continue to talk about genres of fiction. I would like you to revise the genres that you can remember from previous lesson. Write them down in your notebooks. Let's check. Genres of fiction are fantasy, horror, drama, romance, science fiction, and adventure. If you have managed to remember them all, great! Now let's look at some new vocabulary that we will meet in the text. On the screen you can see three new words and their definitions. Let's read the words together. Schooner, reckless, and fugitive. Here you can see their definitions. Your task is to match the words to the correct definitions. You can start. Now let's check your answers together. Schooner is a sailing ship with two or more masts, typical with a four mast smaller than the main mast. Next one, reckless, means heedless of danger or the consequences of one's action, rash or impetuous. And the last one, fugitive, means a person who has escaped from captivity or is in hiding. If you have matched them all correctly, great. If you have two correct answers, well done. Now you have some time to write these words down in your notebooks. Now we are going to read a short summary of a novel Sea Wolf. While reading, I would like you to make some notes, because later we are going to do an exercise based on this text. The novel takes place in 1893 in the Pacific Ocean. Humphrey Van Wyden, a resident of San Francisco, a well-known literary critic, travels by ferry across the Gulf of Golden Gate to visit his friend and on the way gets into a shipwreck. From the water, he is picked up by the captain of the commercial schooner Ghost, who is called Wolf Larsen by everyone on the board. Larsen, on a small schooner with a team of 22 people, goes to harvest fur seals skins to the north of the Pacific Ocean and takes Van Weyden with him, despite his desperate protests. From the team, Van Weyden learns that Wolf Larsen is famous in the professional environment for reckless courage, but even more terrible cruelty, because of which he even has problems with recruiting the team. Order on the ship is held entirely on the extraordinary physical strength and authority of Wolf Larsen. Anybody who is accused for any misconduct is severely punished by the captain. Despite its terrible strength, Wolf Larsen has attacks of severe headache. One night Van Wyden sees Wolf Larsen climbing across the ship, fully wet and with a bloody head. Together with poorly understanding what is happening Van Wyden, Wolf Larsen descends into the cockpit and tries to determine which of the sailors sleeps and who pretends to be asleep. At this moment, the sailors, led by Leech, attack Wolf Larsen and try to kill him, but the lack of weapons, darkness and multiplicity lead to the fact that Wolf Larsen, using his extraordinary physical strength, is selected on the ladder. After the failed mutiny, the captain's treatment of the team becomes even more cruel, especially of Leech and Johnson. Everybody, including Johnson and Leach, are sure that Wolf Larsen will kill them. 
Wolf Larsen himself says the same, but still does not kill Leach, in spite of the sailor's new attempt on the life of the captain. At the same time, the captain gains intensified attacks of headache lasting for several days now. Johnson and Leach manage to escape on one of the boats. In the course of pursuit of fugitives, the ghost crew recruits another company of victims, including a young woman, the potter's Maud Brewster. From the first glance, Humphrey is attracted to Maud. Wolf Larsen has a brother nicknamed the Death Larsen. The brothers hate each other. Once Wolf Larsen meets Death Larsen and after a sea battle on the boat seized several members of his brother's crew, forcing them to hunt seals along with their team. The wolf is also attracted to Maud. Eventually he tries to rape her but abandons this attempt because of a severe headache. Van Weyden, who was present during this situation, firstly tossing at Larsen with a sword because of indignation and arousing love for Maud. That time, he at the first time saw Wolf Larsen truly frightened. Immediately after this incident, Van Wyden and Maud decide to flee the ghost while Wolf Larsen lies in his cabin with another boat. After taking a boat with a small supply of food, they sail to Japan and a few weeks later wander around the ocean and land on a small island. They cannot leave the island and are preparing for a long winter. After a while, the island is beaten by a broken schooner. This is the ghost, with Wolf Larsen on board. He lost his sight. It turns out that Death Larsen, two days after the escape of Van Wyden and Mott, took the ghost to board and bribed the hunters, leaving his brother on his schooner alone. Cook finally took revenge on Wolf Larsen, mopping up the mast. The crippled ghost with the broken masts drifted in the ocean until it was nailed to the Endeavour Island. By the will of destiny on this island, blinded by a brain tumour, Captain Larsen discovers a rich rockery of seals, which he sought all his life. Modern Humphrey, at the cost of incredible efforts, repaired the ghost and led him to the open sea. At the moment when modern Humphrey finally discover a salvage ship in the ocean, they confess in love to each other. Now let's answer some questions based on the text. Question number one. Where was Humphrey Van Wyden from? And the correct answer is he was from San Francisco. Question number two. How many people were there in Larson's team? And the correct answer is, there were 22 people. Question number three. What was the name of Larsen's schooner? The name was Ghost. And the last one. Who was the death Larsen? And the correct answer is, he was Wolf Larsen's brother. If you have answered all four questions correctly, great. If you have two correct answers, well done. Now let's continue with the listening task. You will hear a recording about reading. You will hear it twice. While listening, I would like you to complete the following notes with no more than one word for each answer. Now you have some time to look through the notes. Let's start listening. Reading. Reading is one of the greatest pleasures in life. I would be lost if I didn't have a good book to read. I can't remember any time in my life when I wasn't reading something. I guess you could call me a bookworm. I've always got my head buried in a book. I think reading is more than just a hobby. It's a part of who we are. We learn many things about the world from books. We entertain ourselves with great novels from all over the world and from the past. Even novels from hundreds of years ago are a great read. You notice how much reading is part of us when you sit on a train. Everyone has a book, magazine or nowadays a computer. Everyone seems lost in their own world. The world of reading is not a bad place to be lost in. Now you will hear the recording for the second time. 
Reading. Reading is one of the greatest pleasures in life. I would be lost if I didn't have a good book to read. I can't remember any time in my life when I wasn't reading something. I guess you could call me a bookworm. I've always got my head buried in a book. I think reading is more than just a hobby. It's a part of who we are. We learn many things about the world from books. We entertain ourselves with great novels from all over the world and from the past. Even novels from hundreds of years ago are a great read. You notice how much reading is part of us when you sit on a train. Everyone has a book, magazine, or nowadays a computer. Everyone seems lost in their own world. The world of reading is not a bad place to be lost in. Let's check your answers together. Reading is one of the greatest pleasures in life. I would be lost if I didn't have a good book to read. I can't remember any time in my life when I wasn't reading something. I guess you could call me a bookworm. I've always got my head buried in a book. I think reading is more than just a hobby. It's a part of who we are. We learn many things about the world from books. We entertain ourselves with great novels from all over the world and from the past. Even novels from hundreds of years ago are a great read. You notice how much reading is part of us when you sit on a train. Everyone has book, magazines, or nowadays a computer. Everyone seems lost in their own world. The world of reading is not a bad place to be lost in. If you have completed all five gaps correctly, great. If you have two, three or four correct answers, well done. Now it's time for some lexis. Today we will talk about figurative language. On the screen you can see three examples of the most popular and common figurative language methods. They are metaphor, a strong comparison made by stating one thing is another without using like or as. Next one is simile, a comparison of two things using like or as. And the last one, hyperbole, which means exaggeration in order to draw attention to something. Let's see how it works by doing the following exercise. On the screen you can see three sentences. Your task is to identify what figurative language is used in each one. Simile, hyperbole or metaphor. You can start matching. Let's check your answers. Sentence number one. The city is a jungle. In this case we use a metaphor because we don't use like or as. Next one, Oliver runs like the wind. In this case, the figurative language used is simile. And the last one, these books weigh a ton. In this case, the figurative language is hyperbole. If you have identified all three figurative language correctly, great. If you have two correct answers, well done. We've had a very interesting lesson today. We have read the text, we have learned some new vocabulary connected to the topic, we have done a listening task, and we have also looked at some lexis. This is the end of our lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your great work. Goodbye.